Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Northern Art Podcast with me, Ant Cosgrove. We are still in lockdown, so this has given me the opportunity to make this second episode. The response to the first episode was overwhelming. I had people contacting me from all over the country, as well as overseas, people from Africa, from New Zealand. Um, somebody has written me an amazing review. It's been really cool. One other thing about the podcast is it's a really easy way to create an archive of information about something I think is pretty important. So like in the last episode with Peter Davis, uh, the actual making of the Northern School book had never been documented anywhere. And so now it's down now, that's done. And so forevermore in, you know, in 10 years, 20 years, if anybody ever wants to research it or look it up, then the information is there and it's available and it's straight from the horse's mouth as well. So before the interview today, I just want to say thank you to Dave for helping editing with the podcast. And also thank you to Lee Harrison, whose video I found on YouTube, um, which has been pretty invaluable with helping me research the guest today. So thank you for that. My guest today is a legendary art dealer who set up his gallery in Todmorden, West Yorkshire in 1981. He built up his reputation for nurturing and helping to create some very large art collections and also supplying affordable but high quality artwork. He deals exclusively with living British painters and he's still not afraid to introduce new artists into his gallery even after all these years. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Dave Gunning from Topmorden Fine Art. Hi Dave, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you Anthony and thank you for this interview. No problem, good morning to you. Um, is everything okay over there in Topmorden? Yes, it's, uh, we're still in lockdown of course. Yeah, but, uh, it's a very strange I'm situation. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, isn't it? It's a, it's a strange thing. Right, so Dave, today we're going to go through um, your history, I suppose, at Todmorden and uh, have a, a chat about you and the gallery and some of the artists that you've, you've had on board over the, over the years that you've been in business. So yeah. what are your sort of early memories of and how did you first sort of become involved in, in art, really? Well, I was born in 1938. Right. At that stage, I had no interest in art. Of course, yeah. <laughs> And then when I went to grammar school and then I went on to university and then I went on to teach French at St. Asse of Grammar School for 20 years. Right, okay. All that time I was interested in paintings. I bought my first painting when I was six. Right. Because there was a jumble sale at the church hall and my mother gave me sixpence, my brother sixpence and my sister sixpence to buy something at the jumble sale. Well, my brother bought a football my sister bought a doll and I bought a big Victorian oil painting with a gold frame on it. I can remember it now. There were trees, there was a <laughs> river, there was a man fishing. And I had to, because I was only six, I had to ask three or four of my friends to help me carry it home. Right. And, and of course, they were totally out of fashion during the war. Yeah. As soon as my mother saw it, she clipped me around the ear, she said, you can take that back. We're not having that old fashioned thing in the house. <laughs> So I had to take it back and I swapped it for some comics, but it must have been in my DNA yeah. at the time to have bought a picture when I was six. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Think of, a lot of people, uh, in, including myself, if you if you think back to when you sort of started collecting uh, art or whatever, a lot of people, they, they possibly when they were younger, collected objects of some sort. And I think that's sort of, it's, you know, the compulsive side of it in some instances as well with collecting art. It can start yeah. when you're a kid if you collect comics or if you collect whatever, you know. That's um, right. That, There's and, a, 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 a collecting gene in the human makeup. Absolutely. There is. There is. Definitely. Definitely. But years later, of course, I collected art postcards right. and I, I ended up with about 30,000. <laughs> wow. But then when I went teaching, of course, and all the time I was teaching, I was collecting. Right. And, um, I was at the time I was I was teaching at a grammar school and I was I was earning forty pound a month. Well, I was buying pictures then. I was going to antique shops and junk shops, and of course they were comparatively cheap then. Yeah. But I used to buy them and buy them, and then because I li I, I was teaching in St. Asaph, which was a small place, lots of the children mm -hmm. went home for dinner. Well, then they'd come to me and say, "Mr. Gunning, Mr. Jones wants to see you." That right. was the bank manager. <laughs> and so I'd go down and he'd say, you've been buying pictures, haven't you? Do you realize your overdraft is oh, 80 pounds? Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones, I'll do my best. Yeah. Then, the, then a, a couple of months would go by, I'd buy a couple more pictures. Then I'd have another call, Mr. Jones wants to see you. Then he, he would say to me, you're still buying, are you? Know, do you realize your overdraft is now 200 pounds? Yeah. It doesn't sound much in today's money, but at the time when I was only earning 40 pounds a month. Oh. And he said, I'm sorry, David, but if you carry on like this, I'm going to have to dishonor your checks. Mm -hmm. 
I struggled then for about six months and didn't buy any pictures, but it was painful. And uh, I I went, I've been teaching for 20 years, and I went to headmaster one day and said, Mr. Williams, I said, I'm resigning. Why, boy, what's happened? He was very Welsh, you know. <laughs> Why, boy, what's happened? I said, nothing's happened. I said, I'm going to open an art gallery. Oh, God, he said, what a silly thing to do, you know. He said, it's a yeah. steady job, teaching good pension, you know. It's dangerous going into the world of business when you're not used to it. Yeah. I said, it's taken me 10 years to decide to do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, and I did it. it. And then I opened this gallery. Was it, and it, was, with another, was it with another guy, I think? It was a, it was a colleague, it was a teacher with you, wasn't it? You sort of first... Yeah, well, Brian Middleton was my business partner because we both got a job at St. Asaph Grammar School. I got the French job yeah. and it was our first job and he got the maths job. Right. And I was told I'd got the French job. I went down to the town, went for a, uh, into the toilet, had to pee and he came and alongside me. He said, didn't I see you at the interviews? I said, yes. I said, oh, I got the French job. He said, oh, I got the maths job. Right. So we sort of piled up and then I was man at his wedding. I was godfather to his first child and, and so we we were friends for years and years oh, until he died. He died about yeah. twelve years ago, I think. And um, and that's how it started up then. And and then the, he was head of maths at uh, Alder Hill School in Rochdale. Right. And I used to come and stay with them because they lived in Bakeup. Okay. And that was why I was in this area, you see. And then. I, I told him about this plan of opening it. He said, oh, he said, and I said, I don't know whether to do it or not. Well, he came to stay with me one weekend. His marriage was beginning to break up, and he came to stay with me. And um, I said, I'm thinking of opening an arc. Oh, God, he said, I would definitely, I would. I'd come, I'd come business in business with you. Because I love teaching, but he hated it. He said, I'll come in business. Uh, I'd join up, with, join with you. And he, I said, oh, right. You must have seen your art collection as well, and new... Yeah, well, I had, I had so many pictures. When I opened, I opened with 250 pictures. See, they were contemporary, oddly enough. Liverpool School, you know, um, Tony Butler, yeah, yeah. Millicent and Ayrton. I had all sorts of... of what, what made you open up in Topperdon? Why did you open up in Topperdon in particular? Well, it's because he he, he lived in Bake Up. Yes. And then when I decided, I couldn't resign, you see. Well, came to stay there one weekend. And, and then I went to school on the Monday. And when I came home on Monday evening, he rang me. He said, you've got to resign now because I haven't resigned up to this point. I said, why? He said, well, I resigned today. So he sort of forced me into resigning. That's why I came to resign because he forced me into it. And with, I thought, well, it's a good area, this. There's plenty of big towns in the area, plenty of population. So I thought, we'll try here. I, I didn't intend to come to Topperdom. We went first to look in uh, Manchester, but everything. I was buying the place. I'd sold my house, but I was buying the shop. You see, I wanted a place where I could live in the gallery ah, because right, I see, yeah, because of course. So you know, there's know. nothing more deadly than a lock-up gallery, you know, because you'd be sitting there for days without anybody coming in. Yeah, of course, it's yeah. not a place that's busy. So that's what we did, and, and then I couldn't afford there. So we tried. I, we were going to go to see Halifax. Well, I'd had back, and we we reached Topperton. And I said, "Stop at this little town." I said, "My back's killing me. I'm going to get some painkillers." So we. Stopped and then went to get paying and then Brian looked and he said look there's a shop going here in Tubberton oh no I said I prefer Halifax well we went to Halifax the only business I could afford were in the, those miles of terraced housing where there's a corner shop you know well that's no good but I couldn't afford to be in the middle of the town so we came back here came here saw the shop saw it was fantastic and I bought it so we ended up in Tubberton right and that was 1981 that wasn't it I believe yeah, 1981 that was yes yeah. okay. So early on um, in the gallery, of course, your collection of that at uh, that point, your own collection, was it mainly I had Victorian? To sell. Was it Victorian, a lot of your work that you were collecting? or It was all contemporary. Right, okay. It a lot of Don McIntyre's, I had a lot of Tony Butler, they're often artists from the Royal Cambrian Academy, even though they may be Liverpool painters, you see, they were still members of the Academy, and, oh, and, right. and Millicent Ayrton was another one I sold a lot yeah. of, and, right, okay. and and so that's what I started the gallery with, and, and of course, it was a slow start, of course, you can imagine, cause it, it was sort of the only gallery in Tobedon. But funny enough, this is the most amazing thing, that Campbell Malone and his wife, they opened a gallery on the same day as I opened, and there'd never, ever been a gallery in Topperton. Incredible. And it just happened. And then they closed after a few years, but right. Campbell's very good to me now. Oh, you know, he's a good, good friend of yours, isn't he? Yeah. 
very good friends, yeah. yes. And um, so that's how it started. Oh. And then uh, then began, it started selling Victorian and 18th century paintings because they were all the fashion at the time. Right, okay. I sold my own collection fairly easily. And but then people were asking, do you ever get any Victorian paintings? So we started getting those. We used to go to Sotheby's and Christie's and buy them in London. Ah, right. So you got them from auction. That's interesting. Yeah, and brought brought them brought them back here. And then we have a, we had a good picture store. He cleaned them if necessary. And Brian was very good with frames. We used to buy sweat frames, you know, which would suit. Because sometimes you'd have a Victorian painting in a two inch frame, you know, which is no good. So we just set them up in nice frames and, and we did very very well you have a very good knowledge of victorian um, and sort of edwardian uh, painters i think before now I've, I've spoken to you a bit like people like edward Daines and paul sandby and people like that and and you sort of you, you know these names off the top of your head don't you yeah well i was very keen on on victorian painting and i collected victorian watercolors right, but they were so cheap you see i used to get i remember buying a, a, a watercolor by sir Lawrence alma tadema right. for nine pound wow Wow. Nobody, uh, I used to go in antique shops and say, have you any pictures? Oh yes, we've got those two oils there and that oil there. Mm -hmm. And there's a pile of old photographs, watercolours and stuff over there in the corner. And then watercolours were piled up with old photographs. They weren't regarded as being anything. Yeah. Having. So I used to buy the most wonderful watercolours, mm -hmm. you know, for peanuts. I got a Lord Leighton portrait of a girl. Yeah. And that was a, about a tenner, something like that. <laughs> right, okay. So what happened then? You, you, so then you were telling Victoria, was there a financial uh, crash then or something? Did something happen at that, after that? Well, yes. It, it, see, I think it was uh, around 1970s or 80s, whenever that big depression was, you know, there was a great crash in the in the markets and things and nobody wanted Victorian paintings all of a sudden so we'd always always had a few modern because I'd always kept in touch with Tom McIntyre we always had some McIntyres and, and so on and so forth and then um, and then it began to move more towards the contemporary because I like northern art and I liked there were so many artists I liked and Campbell and his wife had had a small exhibition of Jeff Key oils, you see, right. only small pictures, but I was very taken with them and, uh, and I, I contacted Jeff and then began to get Jeff's work. And um, like over many, many... 1980s or something like that, I would have thought. Yeah, in the... Uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, that kind of period. And then we went over con completely because we lost on a lot of Victorian stuff because we had to put it back into auction. And I remember we had a, a four cat paintings. That were, they were very fashionable at the time. And we paid about three grand each for them. And they, they went for about 600 each in the auction. So we lost heavily on that. And that was the end of the Victorian era from as regards to Todd yeah. Fine Art. Right. So, and we just went into contemporary work and then little by little I got to know more artists, you know. And I mean, so Je Jeff Key, for example, of course, one thing that Todd Madden, your gallery especially, is sort of is known for is a lot of these artists who have gone on to sort of, you, you, some, in, some, in some cases they were emerging or rediscovered, if you like, and then they've gone on to sort of tremendous success subsequently. That's right. Well, well, it was the same with Pete. And things like that. So Jeffrey Key, of course, being like a prime example. Um, he was a example and, and I, I told you I think the other day uh, on the email that um, from the first day I met Jeff until well he phoned me this week actually exactly. um, I filmed every visit to his studio yeah. that I've ever made and every painting I've ever had of his and dozens of paintings I didn't take because he'd come in to, I filmed him coming into the room with different pictures putting them on easels and I'd say we'll have that one that one that one and that one and that one and then we take that. And <laughs> did I ever tell you the story of the clown paintings? Hey, no, go on, tell me, tell me. <laughs> well, I remember going there once, and Jeff said, oh, I've, I've, I've done a series of clowns, he said, because I was always scared of clowns when I was small, he yeah. said. And I thought, I'll expurgate this, this fear I've had. So he painted a series, of, I think, I forget how many, but say about 15 oils of clowns, yeah. and uh, several works on paper, 
at least that many anyway. And um, well, when I saw them, I don't have to wonder if a painting is good because my hair stands on end. And he brought the first clown in, put on the easel. Oh God, I thought that's a cracker. And he brought another one in, and he brought all the oils in for me to see. I said, God, Jeff, they're absolutely fabulous. And I, I mentally assessed every one, and I thought, well, they're all brilliant, but there are eight that are outstanding. I thought to myself, and then he said, yeah, I'm very, very pleased with the way they've turned out. I said, listen, Jeff, I said, I know I'm a, a, a nightmare. He said, I'm not, pu I'm not putting them out in the market yet because I've got a book on the clowns coming out. Right. shortly and I want to launch the pictures at the same time as the public as the launching of the book and I said Joe I understand I said but listen Jeff could I please please have just two just two I don't I don't <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> he said well all right I said well look make it four <laughs> and that's it so he said all right so I picked four of the eight which I had mental back here sold them all went back I said listen Jeff I know I'm a nightmare but Please let me have two more, just two, and I won't ask for any more. And he said, well, I suppose by two you mean four. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. So I got the other four. And he, I remember he said, at this bloody rate, there'd be no pictures left by the book. <laughs> out. <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, of course, the clown series are highly sought after, aren't they, I think? Um, oh, yeah, well, they, and they were wonderful, the oil. The ones I picked, they were all wonderful, I shouldn't say that. They were all wonderful, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And so, um, and then I filmed everything, you see, I filmed all his collect. you know what a collector he is? He, yeah. he's, had, he's gone through various collections of Chinese ivories, Chinese snuff bottles and furniture and paint. Mm -hmm. I, I got all that filmed, you see, and Jeff there, and of course, Dear Judas, who was always, she always used to make cakes when we came, right. special cakes, and, we'd, and then I used to film Judas bringing the cakes in. <laughs> mm -hmm. very, very good. We'll talk about some of the artists that have obviously come through the gallery over the years, obviously Jeff being, uh, being one of these guys. So I'll just mention a few names and maybe you could just sort of tell me how, how these guys came into your life and sort of various things yeah. about them. So obviously Don McKinley was a big, was a huge name for the gallery and an amazing artist, you know, a fantastic painter. And so how did you sort of first come across Don? Work. I can't remember how I met Don, but I remember being extremely impressed. Yeah. May have gone to an exhibition where there was some of his work, oh, okay. and, um, and I got talking to him. And he, was, he was a lovely chap, was Don, you know, and, and we got on very well, and we talked. And then he said, "Come down to the studio sometimes." So I went to the studio. Well, it, it was wonderful, you know, the wonderful pictures and. I said, oh, can I, can I say, oh, yeah, he said, what do you like? So I picked a load, and so I came here, sold them, went back, got some more. And then it became a, re and then Don began to, began to visit me every Saturday right. for a talk. And he came every Saturday, never missed. And on a Wednesday, he began to, he, he wanted to do a portrait of me. So on a Wednesday, he'd come here and he'd, I'd sit down in the shop and he would do drawings of me. And he did this for, God, I don't know how many months. Right. He did loads, but he'd never let me see them. Right. And I said, why? Because as soon as he'd done the drawing, he'd cover it up. And he said, listen, he said, if you look at it, you might say something and that'll influence how I feel about it. So you can't see it. I've since seen them at Yanni's, you know, Yanni showed them to me, but... Yeah. And, and he did, and then he ended up doing an oil portrait. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the oil, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah he, did, he did this oil portrait of me, and that yeah. was very nice. And, I, and it, it was just wonderful, and I filmed all my visits to his studio. That's what's good, you see, because Yanni showed them at his funeral, you know. Nice. She, he showed the film. Yeah. Well, on the wall, uh, there was a huge screen, and then I, I was surprised. I went in there, and there were loads and loads of people there, of course. And, and blow me, I saw the, 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 my films on the screen, because they used to give some to Don yeah. films of... of uh, I, went to, I went to his studio. I only went, I think, once or twice to his studio. It was in, um, like, a slip. The factory, I think. I think. I think if that. Oh yes, that's right. It was. That's, that was where. This I was. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but there was one down there, and then he moved to another. Then he moved to the slipper factory, yeah. and and then he moved to an old mill. Then right, and okay. the top floor of a mill, and I used to go there, you know. And he he, he had oh, it was just marvelous. I love some of his. Um, I love some of the mixed media work that he did as well. You know, um, I like some of the uh, you know the work like he did with cardboard even and things like that. The sculpture sort of stuff. I love those. 
That's it, like sculptures oh, in wow. collage. He tremendous. I love those. And he worked in everything, you know. I remember he he did the he did the Madonna, a wooden Madonna oh. for the high altar at um, Lancaster Priory. Right, okay. And I remember going there. I filmed it all, luckily, oh. and. He said, oh, come down. He said, I've nearly finished it. So I went down and, and I filmed it. It's, it was a, about life-size Madonna, beautiful. And the way Don painted with lots of small strokes of paint, yeah. well, he'd done the Madonna the same with small pieces of wood. And every piece of wood, he drilled a hole in it and put a wooden peg in to hold it in place. So you had this beautiful Madonna in wood holding a bird, uh, the dove of peace. And, and then I, I was standing on a base where he'd done some paintings around the base, religious paintings. It was absolutely stunning. Well, that's now at the Lancaster Priory. And uh, then he was telling me that he, I, unfortunately, I missed this because he, he was doing, in Liverpool Cathedral, they had a Della Robbia kneeling Madonna, mm -hmm. a genuine one from the Renaissance times. I think somebody donated it in Victorian times to the cathedral in Liverpool, the new cathedral, you know. Yeah. And, um, and Don was very taken with it. Well, then they put out that they wanted to offer a commission for anyone because at some time the, the baby in the crib that the Madonna was kneeling over had been smashed to smithereens by some ma religious maniac. And it, so she'd been kneeling, looking at the floor for all this time. And they wanted commission. So Don said, he said, oh, God, Dave, he said, I, I, I put in, I put in for that commission at Liverpool. Oh, well done, Don. He said, but you know, he said to be honest, you got to put a say how much you, you'll charge them. He said, I, I do it for nothing for the honour. He said I would do that crib for nothing, but, right. uh, but they won't take me seriously if I say that. So he said, um, I, I've, I've said an amount that I, I'm prepared to do it for. And he said, and then he, he'd come one week, he said, oh, God, he said, I'm down to the last 12. <gasps> he said, I can't sleep, you know. He said, I'm thinking about it all the time. Then he was down to the last six. Uh -huh. Then he was down to the last four. <laughs> and every week he was getting more and more worked up. And he said, I'm down to the last two. <laughs> he said, I don't know what, oh, he said, I can't think even. Right. And he came here one day, he said, Dave, I've got it. I've got the commission. Oh, wow. Amazing. Oh, how wonderful, oh, said yeah. Don. That's nice. Yeah, that's how wonderful. Nice. And then he, 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 he phoned me, he said, I've started on the commission. And he said, I've done, I filmed it, luckily. I've done the, cri the baby in the crib, and I've, I've tried to make it so it would suit a, a Renaissance sculpture of, of Della Robbia's, because Della Robbia worked in sort of pottery and things. And um, <clears throat> he said, and believe it or not, he said, I finished it. I put it in the kiln to fire it, and the baby blew up. Right. And he said, I just, I just said, well, I, I've, I can't do it. That's the end of the matter. I'll have to just turn it down now. I can't do it because the baby's blown up in the right. kiln. And I said, Don, you've still got a few months. He, I said, yeah. you can do it. Do it again. Well, he redid it. And he said, and this time he said, I put something in the kiln, fired it up and made sure that it was safe. Yes. And he said, and then he did the new Madonna in its little cradle, then the new baby in the cradle. He said, I put it in the kiln and he said, and it was a 24 hour firing, you see. Right. 48 hours, it was 24 hours to heat up and then 24 hours to cool off. Yeah. And he said, and God, it's worked. He said, it's come out. He said, it's better than the first one. Oh, fantastic. And now, and then there was a big ceremony, you see, of unveiling this at Liverpool Cathedral. And he invited me to it. Yeah. But I can't remember why now, but for some reason I couldn't go. Yeah. And I've always regretted that, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a terrific painting. Oh, no, of course, he was still attending live classes. He was still... That's he right. He's painting. He was always painting, wasn't he? Constantly, and that's a lot of the the great artists are constantly doing that daily. Right. Can the sort of just keeping the hands in with the painting. Doing sculptures in bronze. He was doing sculptures in wood. He was doing sculptures in stone. He was doing sculptures in cardboard. He he just did everything. You know, he did he did a vast series of watercolors and drawings, which he showed me once yeah. when Camel Laird closed down in Liverpool. Yeah. He went there and he and he did these beautiful big drawings and, and uh, watercolors and things of of Camel Laird as it was in his last days. Yeah. 
So it was. It was. It was an exhibition. You know, if somebody would put on an exhibition of his work, of of some of, of not just the paintings, of some of the other works as well, like you say the sculptures and things, it'd be amazing. You know, if one of the one of the big galleries in Liverpool put put an exhibition of him, it'd be uh, it'd be superb. I think. Yeah. Well, he, he, he. I went there once, and he'd done a series. Uh, there was a Dr. Duncan from Liverpool mm-hmm. who, in the Victorian times. Every year, thousands of people died. And this doctor realized, or he read an article that said that that, that this disease wasn't airborne, it was waterborne. And he noticed that in the slums of Liverpool, miles of slums, that the water pipes and the sewerage pipes ran along together. And sometimes the the sewerage pipes would break and then the the water would go into the drinking water. And there were these great outbreaks of of this disease Mm -hmm. every year. And so he set about separating the two pipes and making it safe. And the the year he did it, there was a 75% reduction in the outbreak of cholera was the disease. And so they, they put they put a big exhibition on. I think it was at the Tate in Liverpool. I'm not sure, but I think it was because Don invited me to go. Well, I went to his studio one day and there were these fabulous paintings of Dr. Duncan in his house. Yeah. And, the, and there was a little girl on a sofa, obviously dying of cholera. And there were c- candles burning. Uh, because they thought that if the, the disease was it floating in the air, but it wasn't. It was coming through the water. Yeah. I saw these, and there was a, there were two or three quite big ones, you know, sort of thirty by forty, you know, maybe a bit smaller than that, say twenty four thirty. And then there were three or four others. There were about six in all. And I said, God, John, they're wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I said, I've got to have them. He said, I'm awful sorry, Dave, he said, but they know about them at the for the exhibition, yeah. you know, the, and the, the, they, they've they been and measured them and, the, the, and, and so on and so forth to, to where to hang them. And I said, well, Don, you better think of them because I'm not moving from here till they're mine. You're quite persuasive, aren't you, with these artists, yeah. <laughs> and I, he said, well, what can I do? He was getting a bit upset then. He said, what can I do? He said, I can't do anything about They've been and they know they're coming. Right. <laughs> and he, he said, I, I, what can I do? He said, you know, I said, well, I said, you better organize some bed and breakfast because I'm not moving from here till they're mine. <laughs> Very good, he was, very good. Got them down, and then he said, "Oh, I'll tell you what." He said, "You can buy them if you like, and they can go in as not for sale." Right. And he said, "So I bought the whole lot." Yeah. And then uh, when the exhibition came, he, we, he dro- we drove over to Liverpool, and we went into this. And there were everything in there. There were paintings, sculptures, all Doctor Duncan. You see. And his were there, of course. And then I was talking to various people and looking at all the wonderful exhibits. But I thought Don's were the best, personally. Yeah. And then a man came up to me. He said, excuse me. He said, are you Dave Gunning? I said, yes. He said, now I'm from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. We'd be interested in buying that picture there because apparently you own them all. Right. I said, yeah. I said, I'm awfully sorry. I said, I, I can't sell them now. I said, because I want to put them in my own gallery in, in Topperton. Yeah. And I said, if you want them, you uh, uh, you can come over and you can buy them from the gallery. And then a woman came and she said, oh, I'm from the School of, of Tropical Nursing. And we wondered if you'd like to sell us one of your pictures. I said, I'm awfully sorry. I said, and I told her the same thing. Yeah. Well, they never came over and I sold them in the gallery. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so. You had the, um, you, did a, you did a series of, on Rottenstall as well, the Pie and Peas. I think you bought all that of those. Was, and in fact, I used the same technique there. Wow. I, they, they were they were done at um, the cafe in Rottenstall, yeah. and there were I don't know there were probably about thirty pictures altogether. And I and I, I went with John took me to took us to the opening. You know, we went to the opening, and there was the mayor and mayoress and all that caper, and there were loads of people there. And, pe- and what was so wonderful was that people didn't know that John was painting them, and people say, "God, look, there's you, Mum, on that right. picture." Yeah, that's you. And I said, how did you do that, John? He said, well, I'd sit there. I used to go in, especially on pension day, because lots of old people there, because they used to sell, like, you know, egg chips, peas, a sausage, and a cup of tea for £1.50. So mm-hmm. pensioners used to go on pension day to get cheap meals. And um, 
he said, I'd, I'd see something, I think, God, that would make a good... So, so he said, I'd start drawing them quickly and glancing and quickly. But if they looked at me, I'd turn my head and look at somebody else and look as if I was drawing them. Mm -hmm. So then they'd look away and then I'd turn back and carry on. So the people never knew he was doing it. That's how he did it. <laughs> and so many people said, oh, look, there's us, there's you, oh, there's you. <laughs> And they're looking around the pictures. And I said to Don, when I, when I saw, I saw them in the studio first, of course, I said, oh, Don, I said, they're wonderful. I've got to have them. He said, well, I can't really. He said, because they've been commissioned by the Arts Council and they won't pay me till they've been exhibited. And I said, oh, that's a problem. <laughs> I said, um, oh, what can we do? And I was, I, I could see him getting uncomfortable because I kept saying, oh, what can we do? Oh, dear me. <laughs> And he said, well, I said, well, what if I bought them all? He said, aye, that's a way around it. He said, we can put them in, it's not for sale. Yeah. So I bought them all. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we went to the exhibition, and of course it went like hot cake. Yeah. Yeah. And I sold them to some very good co collectors, you know, uh, a lady in London, and she was lady, I won't say her name, but lady so-and-so, yeah, okay. and bought the, bought the first one, which was just pie and peas on a plate and a cup of, a cup of tea yeah. on a plate. It was a lovely little thing and she bought that. And um, oh, and then, of course, they went like hotcakes. In fact, I've got one, the one that's the most famous here. I think I put it in your exhibition. Uh, an old lady in a, at a table and a daughter in a red coat. And the, I've, I've posted them a few times on the Northern Art page as well, the images. Of, of the I've noticed that, that one, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, they're very nice. Very good. Um, right, so that was that sort of Don McKinley uh, we've touched on. Um, the one artist in particular, is, there's so many artists with you, Dave, and I can, you know, we could probably be here for, you know, for 15 hours talking. One of the artists that people think of with you is William Ralph Turner and, and your sort of connection with that. And sort of just to briefly sort of give people the overview of that. Of course, William Ralph Turner was a painter and documenter of industrial Lancashire and had been off the radar for a number of years. I and mean, he'd sold previously, um, he'd had, you know, he exhibited widely and he had probably had sold at like Gibbs Bookshop in Manchester and the, and the Pit Cairn with when Yeah, uh, where Dilly was and a then, great promoter of his work in the early days. Yeah, right. yeah. And then, and then it, they had this lull, didn't they, I suppose, for a while of, of sort of not that much happening. And I think you were kind of the right man at the right time to sort of rediscover him, if you like, if that's sort of what happened. Well, what happened was I went to a, a, a local solicitor who had been bought a lot from me. He invited me for dinner to his big house in uh, somewhere around here. I can't remember yeah. where it was because he took me there in his car. And when we were there, huge house, and it was full of paintings, things I'd sold him. I, saw, I remember selling him a big 30 by 40, I think it was 30, 40, upright Jeff Key of a naked woman. Bloody hell, what a picture that was, a wonderful <laughs> thing. And, and and he said to me, lots of people invite me for meals, so I never want to go. But he said, I said, have you got room for this, Peter? It's such a big picture. Are you sure you've got room? Oh, he said, yeah. If it, I said, have you hung all those pictures? He bought so many. I said, have you hung them all? He said, yes. I thought he's fibbing. He couldn't, I mean, he, he couldn't possibly live in a house that's big enough to take that collection. Yeah. Anyway... When he said, would you like to come for dinner? I said, yes, because I thought, oh, I'll be able to see for myself now. I need to be in this massive house. And of course, this picture of Jeff, the nude, was hanging in a room with about three foot above it and four foot below it. So it, on the wall, you know, so it, it didn't look too big. And um, his wife said, why didn't you show David around the house? So I went round to all various rooms and yeah. looking at all the pictures. And then we went in this room and there were two paintings and it was the old hair stood up on my neck syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I said, God, who are they by, Peter? They're, they're good. He said, oh, there's a chap called William Turner. He said, you, you'll never find any. He said, it's taken me 20 years to find these two. He said, oh. they never come on the market. And he said, he's, and he's dead anyway. Oh, what a pity. I said, I'd love to have known <laughs> somebody like him. So I came back, never thought anything more about it. Well, the next time we went to Jeff Keys to get some paintings, luckily, as we left, I said, by the way, Jeff, I said, have you ever heard of William Turner? Oh, yes, he said, he's a friend of mine. He is. He said, oh, yeah, he's still alive. He's 80. Oh, God, he said, would you like to meet him? I said, I certainly would. Yeah. Well, I'll give you his address. You write to him tonight, and I'll phone him and tell him that you're a bona fide dealer, that you're dealing my work, and that he's quite safe to let you in the house because he lives alone. So that was it. And then I went to the house, 
And I have often said to people, I've never taken heroin, but I'm sure it feels like I felt when he opened that door because the ha there were over a thousand paintings in the house, okay. lots of them framed, lots of them not, but they were stacked in every room and every corner, everywhere, and they were all breathtaking. I just was couldn't believe it, you know. So we got chatting to him, we got f friends, and, and then I brought about, I think about 15 or something like that the first time. Well, s slowly sold them, but it may be over about a month, sold them all. Yeah. And then went back and got more and kept going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, getting more and more. And lots of the early work was vet particularly good. It was stronger, I thought, than the very late stuff when he when he developed Alzheimer's. No, not Alzheimer's. Um, okay. That's right, Parkinson's. Yeah. And but these early ones were just fantastic. And um, and then somebody phoned me from London at the chap, uh, and he, he he wrote for the day the the Telegraph, the Sunday Telegraph, yeah. and he phoned me up. His brother-in-law lived in Tobberton and they bought a picture, that was it. They bought one of Will's from me. And at that time, everybody was saying, who is this Will Turner? So I wrote a piece out and then did hundreds of copies of it. And everybody bought a picture, I gave them a copy of, the, of this piece. Yeah. Well, I had sent it to his brother in Paul Barker in London, who wrote for the Telegraph. Oh, okay. He sent a copy of it and he phoned me, said, do you think Will Turner would like me to write a piece on him in the Telegraph. I said he certainly would. I said I won't even ask him, he will. And so he said, okay. So he came over, he interviewed me for the day. And then the next day he went over to Wills and interviewed him. And then this piece came out in the Sunday Telegraph magazine with photographs and all that business. And well, they put my name, phone number, email address. Right. The works in the article so of course my phone never stopped ringing from eight in the morning till ten at night for the next fortnight people ring you up saying oh can you now what's the name of those artists well same with that scottish painter that does um fire um big uh Towson, no not Pete Towson. Pete Towson, that's him yeah, yeah. Pete Towson. And then the phone went one day and said, hello. He said, oh, he said, I've been reading about this William Turner. He looks a wonderful artist. He said, Do you th is there any chance of me getting hold of one? And uh, I said, I'm afraid not. I said, because I have my own customers. Yeah. And I, I get, I'm getting a lot of inquiries from London. There was another RA phoned as well about him. And I said, but I, I, I supply my own customers first and foremost. And I said, um, what's your interest in art? He said, oh, I'm a painter. Who are you? I said, what's your name? He said, Peter House. And oh, I said, the same as the famous Scottish painter. He said, I am the famous Scottish. <laughs> well, there you go. Wow. Yeah. And then, of course, after that, it was just crazy. Then everything I could, people were waiting, waiting. And I ended up selling three or four thousand of his pictures. That's incredible. I mean, yeah, certainly the... Um some of the early works as well that you see. But yeah. course, when you were selling them uh, originally as well, of course, the value of them as well uh, sort of was, was quite low, wasn't it? You sort of, you sold them... Very much, quite, I mean... Quite they, expensive at the time when you were sort of first selling them. They were th the, the, the sort of the 8 by 10s were 395, and then sort of 1620 was 550, and 2030 was 850 or something, you know. Yeah. But then they went up into the thousands yeah, after yeah, it, yeah. that time. I wasn't getting any more. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, and obviously, uh, then, he, then he sort of moved on, didn't he, a little bit, and went to, uh, and then went into some of the other galleries around. But it was good. What you did for his career, you sort of you sent him into the stratosphere, really, with sort of how you did it. And you can certainly see. I, I think people have mentioned before that you can you can see influences of European painters in his work as well. Oh, without question, you know, because Soutine, Soutine... Yeah, of course, yeah, Soutine. I've told that story about Soutine on that thing, I won't tell it again, you know that. Oh, yeah, about the guy who came in, yeah, I know, yeah, I'm sure people can find out about that story if they wanted to. But, yeah, of the, course, you know... Who no, said he had a Soutine, and I said, no, it's William Turner. He said, no, no, he said it's Soutine. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. He's, so that's, uh, yeah. that's William Turner. We talked about Jeff Key. Um, we could talk. I mean, these, these, these hundreds of them, Dave. Of course, um, we have a, a friend of both of ours who I obviously know because of you, which is Mike Knowles, who's just an oh, amazing painter. Um, I guess you know he's a, he's a terrific artist. I'm really and, and Mike is an intelligent guy. He's you know supreme intellect and and yeah, he's a, he's an amazing artist as well. I think and so I've spoke to him. I, I have mails from him quite regular. I guess you do as well, don't you? Yeah, uh, yeah. He's a, he's, he's a tremendous artist that you have in the gallery. How did you sort of first come across Mike's work? Then. Well, 
Um, I knew of him, but I had no way of contacting him. Then I had an old girlfriend that when I was at university, we used to go out together. Right. And um, she phoned me one day and she said, she used to phone me and then we had a long chat. And then she said, um, I bought a painting. I said, oh, have you? Why? She said, well, I just saw this painting. I just loved it. She said, no, I've, I bought it. And the artist is coming here to help me to hang it up because it's quite big. Yeah. Oh, I said, who is the artist? She said, oh, his name's Mike Knowles. I said, oh, I know of him. I said, she's always a wonderful artist. So... I said, could you get me his address? She said, certainly. So she did. And then I phoned Mike and then I went over there and then the rest is history, you know. He's just, uh, he's just sent me a most, I don't know, he sent you a transcription of a titian he's done. Oh, yeah. Titian's, um, I saw it, yeah, he sent it to me. It's a tr tremendous artist. There's one thing, because um, of course one thing that we'll probably, we'll talk about now if you want, if you want to, Dave. You have touched on it that you, you one thing that you have done over the years and years of, of of having a gallery is the documentation of everything, and you've been doing it for years. You you go to the to the studios of artists, and you go to exhibitions, and there and in in your gallery as well, and you document all of the work that you've had, which is an amazing thing that you've done. And one artist that we'll talk about now, which is Nicholas Horsfield, another sort of Liverpool artist. I remember yeah. I remember a couple of years ago, you you sent me one of your videos, and I think it was possibly one of the first times you went to see Nicholas Horsfield, and if yeah. you were walking up the stairs in his house yeah. on the wall is a painting and you stop and you say oh, who, who's the artist and he said it's Mike Knowles and, you, and it was like this, you captured this moment of you first seeing a Mike Knowles painting it was amazing that's right there was a new I think it's a new just not it yeah, I so yeah and it was just it was just this <laughs> moment and I was thinking god that's a, that must be the first time that Dave Gunning had ever seen a Mike Knowles painting and it that's was right it was thing. yeah so that's but he was a lovely Nicholas, a real gent you know he's a and the last time we went there you know I don't. I don't think I've told you this story. Um, we went there, and we, I got. I we'd been round, and he was always finding me. We were one time we were there up in the attic where he had his studio, and then there was a little door. Uh, well, it wasn't a door. It was a panel on the side, uh, a triangular panel. And I said, "What's that, Nicholas?" He said, "Oh, he says the roof space." So I just thought he said, "I think there's some pictures in there." So. Brian pulls the thing out, climbs in through this space, comes out with a pile of fabulous paintings, you know, from the from the fifties and the sixties. Yeah. And so we got all those and we, we, we got loads that day and we came downstairs and put them all up in the front room and, and there were probably twenty or twenty thirty, something like that. And then I was looking in, in his rooms. I said, God, you've got some marvellous watercolours here, Nicholas. He said, oh, you can take any of those you want, Dave, if you like them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, I think they're absolutely beautiful. And he said, yeah, he said, you can take some. So we'd got all the oils organised. We'd title, written the titles down and so on and so forth. And then I said... Oh, I said, can we start having some of these? Of course, because, oh, Dave, he said, he always liked us to take him for a pint, you see. He said, can we do it when we come back from the pub? So I said, oh, all right then. So we went to the pub, and I even filmed him in the pub talking to Brian about etching. <laughs> and we we had, he had, I didn't have anything. Brian had half a pint, and Nicholas had two pints, you see. And he'd enjoy himself, so we coming back. But he was half sloshed. <laughs> when we got back to the house, you see, we went in and we all sat down. And the next thing, this was... Yeah. <laughs> and Brian said, come on, let's go. I said, I'm not going without them bleeding watercolours. <laughs> so we sat there and we sat there for about an hour and a half, you know, and he was snoring <laughs> away. He came round, oh, he said, I'm so sorry, lads. He said, I must have dozed off for a minute or two. <laughs> Didn't realize how long he'd be. And I said, we have some of the water. Oh, Dave, he said, I've, I've got a bit of a headache for some reason. He said, can we leave it till next time? So I said, all right. Yeah. Well, then he died not long oh, after. What a shame. Yeah. Never got the chance to go back. Right. Yeah. But that was uh, one of Nicholas's comical stories. Yeah. And Another one, I may have told you this, I don't know, but he said that he was from quite a well-off family. You know, he went to a private a merchant tailor somewhere in these posh public schools, Nicholas, yeah. and his accent. And um, he said when he was 19, his parents took a villa in France for the summer, as they often did, he said. And they were there one day, and this man came in, and he said... Oh, he said, this is my son, he's Nicholas, he's an artist. 
Oh, he's an artist. He said, there's an artist in the next chateau. He said, would you like to meet him? And Nicholas said, yes, I wouldn't mind. He said, so they went. And who was it but Brack? Wow. So he said he got shown upstairs into Brack's studio, met Brack. And he said, I, I didn't realize how important. He said, you know, Dave, he said, I could kick myself if only I'd have thought on. He said, I hardly said a word. And Brack showed him around the studio, showed him loads of drawings, showed him the paint. And then he, he gave us a, a coffee and cake, and we all sat there chatting. And he said, and then we came away. He said, what a lost opportunity, he said, to have been in the presence of that giant and not yeah. no, not realising it. That's incredible, Dave. That's amazing. Yeah. He's, a, yeah. he's a tremendous pain. Other artists, of course, you've had, you've had, obviously, you had Liam Spencer, didn't you, for a while, earlier on into his career? I think you had Liam. Well, yes, I had a lot of wonderful Liam Spencers, so marvellous pictures. And he was in a studio where he did lots of those um, motorways with cars coming down. Yeah. And I forget what the name of the studio was now, but then he moved somewhere else, and then he moved to the middle of Manchester, and we went to that one as well. And we got uh, we got a lot of work off him over the time. But well, you had, so you had the, you had the I said at Salford, didn't he, at the Lowry, which that sort of raised his profile greatly, I think, when the Lowry first opened. That's right. Well, we, we went to that exhibition, and um, in his studio, I'd seen the most wonderful... There were three pictures of looking across Manchester in the evening, and the skies were red. God, they were fabulous paintings. I said, God, you see this arm of mine, this left arm? He said, yeah. I said, chop it off if I can have one of those. <laughs> He said, I'm sorry, Dave. He said, they're booked for the opening of the Lowry Centre. He said, I can't yeah. let you have them. <laughs> so I said, oh, I'm so disappointed. They're wonderful pictures. Anyway, the Lowry exhibi exhibition came and they put up the, the smallest and the biggest of these pictures on the walls. Yeah. And Liam phoned me and he, he said, listen, Dave, he said, they haven't put the third one up. He said, so you can have it if you like. Mm. I said, fabulous, I'm so thrilled, I said. And he said, I'll phone the Larry now and tell them not to put th that one out for sale. Right. So I said, thanks very much. Well, then I sat here, I was trembling with excitement, and then I thought, I've got to make sure he doesn't forget. So I phoned the Larry, and I said, um, hello, he said, my name's Dave Gunning, I said, and um, I just wa want to, sh I'm, I'm happy. Um, what Liam said was, if you buy it from, if you have it from me, you won't have to pay the Lowry charge, the commission, you see. So I said, okay. And I said, so it's, to, yes, he said, Mr. Mr. Uh, Spencer has told, told us that we're not to part with that one. I said, oh, good. And then I, I thought, oh, great, that's worked out beautifully. Yeah. And then about 10 minutes later, the phone went. <laughs> Liam said, I take it it was you that phoned the Larry, was it? <laughs> yes, it was, yeah, Liam. Yeah, very good, very good. I said, I couldn't bear the thoughts of not catching that picture. <laughs> <laughs> very good. And the other artists, obviously, who you, we could literally be here talking all day, but I'll just throw some names just to sort of get the names mentioned, I suppose. And maybe we'll have to do another talk at some point, Dave. But of course, you've had like, you've got Peter Stanaway, Reg Gardner, all people with their own sort of immense histories. Gordon Radford, two actors. Hey, oh, yeah. Um, Russell Howard, who obviously sadly passed away recently. Dave Hartley, you've shown uh, Olivia Pillin, Richard Clare, Anthony Mann, Mann, I think he's one of the more recent ones. Ian Norris, Adam Ralston, Lucy Manfredi, all these people. <laughs> you've, uh, you've had some good names, haven't you? Well, some, well I'll, I'll comment on, Lee, uh, on um, Peter Stanaway because I think he is a man with a vast future ahead of him. Yeah. I think his work is absolutely breathtaking now. He's producing wonderful work, and I've got I've got people who are crazy about he's him. He's one of the loveliest guys I've ever met as well. He's such a nice guy. He's, he's... He is, and I, I he brought his first work here oh years ago. It must be years because I was in the Philippines. Right, okay. And um, he brought some work, and he and Brian was here, and he said, I wondered if you'd be interested in having any of my work. So Brian said, well, leave a few things, and we'll, when Dave comes back, we'll have, we, you know, he can have a look. So I came back, and I, I said, God, they're good, they are, Brian. I said, a bit dark, but they're good. So we, we contacted him and said, yeah, we'll have you. And so um, I think there were two or three landscapes, but they were very dark 
he was dealing in dark grey, dark right, olive okay. green, very dark colours. And I remember, um, th- and he, he contacted me after about a month and he said, any luck? I said, I'm afraid not, Peter. I said, do you want to know why? He said, yeah, why? I said, because they're too dark. Right. They're so dark. So he puts an orange pass in each picture and the three of them sold. Because the orange lifted all the colours. Mm-hmm. And and then after that, of course, he went on and on and on. And I, I've sold hundreds and hundreds of peaches. Now, the last lot I got, I got about, I think it was, I don't know how many, 16 or something like that. Well, they'd gone within a month. Yeah. And I've got people, I've got one customer who who own those solicitors I, I've mentioned before. Yeah. They've got about 30. Another customer's got 29. Another customer's got 28. That's unbelievable. And Serious collectors, you know, they're people who know what they're doing. And and Mike Whedon has has got nearly 30. He loves them. He just loves them. And I think he's, some of the ones I've had recently have been absolutely breathtaking. Mm. They are, he is going to go somewhere, this Peter, because they're so fabulous, his paintings. My my wife's a massive fan of his. Um, She really likes his work as well. We've got, um, we've got a few of his work as well. Um, Oh, good. Yeah, she's a big fan. Yeah, I mean, these, these are, isn't there um, a, some collectors in Wales who've got a huge amount of? Because obviously, you've you've helped sort of nurture a lot of big collections now, just over the years since you've. I mean, those are the solicitors that I've mentioned. Oh, are they the ones that they're in Wales? Are they? Is that right? It's quite that's a huge collection, isn't it? They're wealthy people. Yes, yeah. and they've got a fabulous collection. They've got they've got about a hundred. Will Turner oils and about 100 and odd watercolours. That's amazing. <laughs> well, there was a Will's house one day, you know, I'll just tell you, cutting across this quick story. Okay. Um, we'd gone to Will's and, and Will used to let me look around the house. He'd just go and look anywhere, he said, because he used to find painting. There'd be a pile of old newspapers in the bedroom and in the middle would be three oils mm-hmm. that he'd put there and forgotten about. So I used to find pictures everywhere. And then on this particular day, I went there and there was a big cupboard in it. In it he had about five bedrooms in in his own bedroom there was a big cupboard and I opened it and there was a big parcel in like crinkly old brown paper obviously been there donkey's years and it was tied up with this hairy string and I said Will what's this parcel in your bedroom he lad he said I've no idea get it out and have a look when I opened it, it had about 150 watercolours, oh, all from the 50s, 60s and early 70s, mainly from the 60s. Okay. And they were mint because he'd never framed them, so the colours were perfect. It, mm-hmm. They were just fabulous. So I could be saying, yeah, he said, take them. And so I took them and they bought, getting on for 100 of them, these solicitors. That's amazing. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some of the watercolours. When you've done your documentation of various, I've seen some a lot of the watercolours, you show them on your screen and then they go off, don't they, and you give a brief description of the titles and things. Yeah. Um, so I've seen some of the watercolours. With regards to that, with regards to sort of the documentation of, of these things that you've done over the years, have you got like a, a plan of what you might hope to achieve with this in the long term? Is there something that you're wanting out of it? Uh, you know, what's no, well, what, I, what I've planned and what I've put in my will is that when I die, the whole collection... I, will go to the North Film Archive. Right. I've said to Gordon Ratter, so I think it would leave him to the Stockport Art Gallery because of Will Turner's links to start. Oh, he said, I wouldn't know. He said, I wouldn't do that because they might end up just in the cellars there, you know, with all the other stuff that people give them. And he said, why not try the BBC? So I phoned the BBC and this lady answered. She said, oh, she said, how wonderful. She said, we'd be thrilled to get them. And then she went very quiet, a voice, and she said, don't leave them to the BBC because they haven't got a Northern Archive. He said, they'd, they'd only end up going down to London. He said, try the Northwest Film Archive because they specialise in. Yeah. So I phoned up Northwest Film Archive. Oh, she was over the moon, the woman. She said, absolutely marvellous. We'd love to have them. So you see, now there's 20, there's, I'm on tape 26 now. So there's 25 DVDs. So that's interesting, Dave. And I think talked about so many things. I was going to ask a guest a particular question and see if they sort of might have a response to it. You might not have an answer immediately off the top of your head. Maybe I should have warned you. Um, the question is, is there any artist from, from art history that you might like to have met or perhaps had a dinner with or, or known? Uh, it, you know, it can be any time in history. It could be somebody who's alive. It could be somebody who's dead. It could be whatever. Is there anybody in particular that, that you can bring to mind? Stra Angelico. All right, okay. 
Why? Because I I love his his enunciation, which is in Florence. I've seen it in Florence. Yeah. There's a the place where he lived in 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 Florence, and he painted all the walls of the cells of the monks. He put a, a, a religious painting on the, every wall, and as you go up the stairs, there's this big enunciation, absolutely breathtaking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I'd love to meet him, but of course, I'd lo also love to have met Rubens. Yeah. I'd love to. Have, well, there's so many. I'd love thank to have. Met. This is it. Oh, well, I thought it was a good question, so thank you, thank you for that been amazing to speak to you Dave and I will catch you again soon and that's it thank you very much for joining me today and uh, okay. we'll, we'll speak again soon Dave yeah yeah thank you very much all right take care Dave see you soon bye mate bye bye, bye. Thank you for listening to the episode today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please check out the Northern Art Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash the Northern Art page. And also we've uh, recently set up a, an Instagram account, which you can check out as well. That's also the Northern Art page on Instagram. Uh, please like, comment, share, message me, whatever you want to do. It's much appreciated and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.